Is it possible for education to begin before birth? The answer is a resounding yes. Hello, I'm Naika and I will be your host for this episode, Women and Mothers Who Have the Power to Change the World. In today's episode, we will learn from Carla and Laura why education begins before birth. Maisa Ivanhoff had said, most mothers have no inkling of the tremendous influence their inner state has on the child in their womb. You must realize that the seed is only the mold. She, the mother, influences the seed provided by the father by giving it conditions that will either help or hinder the development of its various qualities and characteristics. You may wonder how she does it. She too has to watch over her thoughts and feelings and the kind of life she leads. So as you can see, it is possible for education to begin before birth because true education is truly subconscious. A mother can have a beneficial influence on her child in the womb through the harmony of her thoughts, actions, and feelings. Furthermore, the prenatal influence must be faithfully continued once the baby is born, for a tiny baby is highly sensitive to its environment. Now, let us learn more about the two knowledgeable and dedicated speakers here with us today. Carla and Laura from Brazil. Carla Machado is a multifaceted expert, system analyst, psychotherapist, and passionate about prenatal education. She is a distinguished president of the Brazilian National Association for Prenatal Education, known globally as ANEP. Carla founded ANEP's national chapter in Brazil in 2010 and has since been instrumental in developing its extensive 18-month training program focusing on the holistic well-being of mothers and babies. Alongside her, we have Laura Uplinger, the Vice President of ANEP Brazil. With over 40 years in prenatal and perinatal conscious parenting, Laura brings a rich blend of cultural and academic backgrounds. Laura is known for her dynamic approach in engaging diverse audiences, from teenagers to birth professionals across continents. Laura's work in Brazil spans various social environments, emphasizing the universal importance of prenatal education. A warm welcome to you, dear Carla and Laura. I'm so glad that you're here to talk about such an important topic. Let us dive in. So first, can you share with us your knowledge around preconception? Mm -hmm. Well, it's an honor for us to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's a major subject. And we have been into that for, for a while. <laughs> and about preconception, uh, we can say that preconception really matters because conception matters. Okay, and what do you mean by that? Well from the Vedas, from ancient texts, and from transpersonal psychology, conception ends up being the most important moment of our life. That initial moment where everything is possible just before, then when we start our life, when conception has started, a fractal has been established. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever heard it that way. So what's the importance of a woman's egg and a man's sperm? Each sperm and egg mm -hmm. carry information of the whole ancestrality for, of this new life. So we took, take with him all the story, all the memories from the people who came before. Mm. And it's like a seed that will be ready to attract all the nutrients, all the elements to form the baby's body. So it is uh, like the information, it's very tiny, tiny mm -hmm. a seed, but it has all this information. It's like a whole library Perhaps we can say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's tiny, but contains huge spaces for memory, for information. Beautiful. Now, 
who is going to be that sperm that will get to the egg? How is the egg going to choose some of the sperms? There's a lot that has um, brought kind of a revolution in our understanding. It's not that frantic race towards the egg. There is speed, yes, and the young ones, young sperm, they get there to the egg first. They have in their head, they're more acid, and they will unveil the egg from uh, la zona pellucida. It is a, a part like a veil surrounding the egg. And then the egg can open up to more mature, more interesting uh, sperms that are they're arriving. And uh, that's the moment of conception, that extraordinary ejaculation. And then a whole movement is, is set in, um, in, in motion and it goes round. You know, it's not like a race from one point to the other. There's a whole spiral way of moving. We have learned a lot, but sperm would be for the, the spiritual psychology a ray of sunshine made liquid. When it's made matter, it's gold. So we have three states of light, of sun ray, the gold, physical state, the sperm, the semen of a man, and finally the sun ray, the etheric level. So it is very sacred, this love making. Mm -hmm. And that leads me to ask you how, what is the best way to prepare to conceive a child? Well, there's a lot of work on that. <laughs> it, it's wonderful when the couple are, is really into this project. Uh, like they prepare their wedding, their mm. uh, special date. Uh, we can also prepare ourselves to conceive a child as a sacred moment. So we have uh, some not so simple tasks, but at the same time, this simple, because it's related to all the idea of purifying, like the kind of food d that we will eat uh, during a, at least nine months before conceiving. How can you um, purify the, the water, the, the not having uh, trans, transgenic uh, food, uh, M -M -G MGO modified, mm -hmm. modified, and especially uh, organic food, but also getting rid of your own personal bad um, experiences around birth, around pregnancy. And so you can you can take uh, uh, a while you can have this time to analyze how was how you were conceived mm -hmm. how you were gestated how was your birth so you can ask uh, people around you mother and father or you can go into a deep voyage inside yourself but anyway something that will connect you to the experience that is already registered on your cells in order not to repeat because mm -hmm. what do we, we are not conscious about life will repeat to us in order to heal to find uh, healing so uh, if we take care of that the child will be will be liberated of this role of showing the parents uh what she or he needs for development because that that's a, a big uh, I, I call it uh, the the initiatic uh, path the parentality to mm -hmm. become a father to become a mother it's initiat initiatic journey so it, it starts when we start thinking about having a baby so this is a, 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 a ready uh, to become parenting, pa parents, just to mm -hmm. begin thinking. And th there's a big uh, and beautiful path we can, we can walk in with our heart, with our, our intelligence and knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
it, it's amazing how we can become more aware of how our bodies are working. Are we resting? Are we doing some exercise? Mm -hmm. Are we refraining from exaggerations in, uh, in food or in drinking? Can we do perhaps some cleansing in, in our way of life? But this time, not to look nice, but to prepare for a special arrival. There's a huge mission. Pregnancy is so important and it's worth preparing. Preparing for it, preparing for conception because there will be a meeting of souls, a commitment that will last a lifetime. And uh, Master Omram would always want us to be aware of how we could prepare ourselves in order to walk towards this moment of conception. Mm -hmm. So beautifully and, said. And Laura talked about the fractal mm -hmm. conception. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the idea of fractal is that you can reproduce the whole of the cauliflower, for example, in a piece of cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Then you can do a smaller piece so you can go even small smaller but the the whole cauliflower is there the image so each part represents the whole mm -hmm. uh, so the the conception is this moment where you still have uh, the the power in your hand the, the before you threw uh, the stone in the water and then there will be the the ripples the ripples mm -hmm. And before throwing this stone, you still have the power and you can impregnate your thoughts and your feelings. And with this intention, it's like the seed has the information. So it's mm -hmm. to form in, inner, inside mm -hmm. himself. So if we dedicate this moment of conception and we really choose this moment like as i said uh, uh, an important date mm -hmm. then the, the chances of the whole pregnancy and the whole life of this new being to be wonderful they are big yeah mm -hmm. and also paying attention to the the conditions around us we're making love yes and it's sacred it's beautiful but is it raining are there strong winds then Master mm -hmm. Omram would say, like in the Vedas, refrain from conceiving a child mm -hmm. until all the electric magnetic fields around you are in great harmony. And perhaps even conceiving in the morning, already with the light of the sun, or very early in the morning. Uh, the moon, is it waxing? H how are the conditions mm -hmm. from the very physical one to the conditions mm -hmm. of your own love, what you feel. Had you heard of this before? In some, some things you have said, yes. And it's just so beautiful because you went from the very subtle to the physical. And it's very also empowering, very empowering. I think, so I'm a teacher. So I see already the result, the outcome, right? I have the children in my classroom. And many times parents come to me, what can I do to help them? Or it's already done. Like, I, I, it's, it's like, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what to do. No, they often. And I do what I can to help and guide, but it's not easy. But what you are saying and recommending to all people who want to become parents is you have a lot of control in a way, of power, of influence, I should say. You can make a difference from how you think about conceiving. You can, you. And I think many times we forget that as people. We forget that. It's a very special moment, a moment of great freedom for a couple. The only one, perhaps, mm -hmm. where we decide. Mm -hmm. Then, from then on, once conception has occurred, life will follow its course with our help, of course but we will not be the ones deciding. But that very moment when we say, let's have a kid, 
Let's mm -hmm. open up our lives for somebody who will come and perhaps be our teacher mm -hmm. and will certainly be an excellent reason so that we can work on ourselves better and better. And also this, uh, the electromagnetic field of a soul is so um, sensitive. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, the master recommended not to have kids during the, the electromagnetic uh, uh, storms. Right. So it, because it's, it's uh, at the same time, it is, it's becoming uh, physical. It's not yet. Mm -hmm. So all this mm -hmm. period of the conception, pregnancy, it is the materialization of the subtle uh, mm -hmm. of the spirit into the matter. So mm -hmm. uh, it, it is this journey. Uh, so while the parents are taking this journey, this inside journey, the, the, the child, the soul who is coming is taking a big journey even bigger <laughs> than mm -hmm. what parents did. Sometimes the couples uh, complain, oh, that's too much work, that's not fair, especially the women. Uh, you have too much to do. Well, it's not, uh, we are just uh, putting names, giving mm -hmm. words to that, what nature mm -hmm. already gave the power to, to, the, to women and to the couples. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just about talking about that and making people more conscious about how they use this freedom because they are free but the power mm -hmm. is immense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so speaking about essentially you're like prepare and i love how you've said and other things i've heard um, from you you're basically creating like a red carpet for a happy and healthy life so can you speak more about that so um yeah, speak more about what you mean when you've yeah. said that. When we have actors walking on the red carpet to receive an Oscar, they were chosen. They were, they were invited to be there. It's an important ceremony. When you're inviting somebody to come live with you, get themselves into a body, build a body to have this experience here on earth is big deal. When a soul leaves the subtle planes, it has something to do here. So all this cleansing, all this purification, is to be more aware, more attentive to who is coming and how we will receive them. But it's so different to be invited mm -hmm. than just arrive. Mm -hmm. I love and, that. And the couple can invite also consciously the soul. Uh, it can be very specific, but it's not that good. Mm -hmm. it, it, the best way, we, I think, is to open this um, idea, the mind, this mind, only uh, to, to invite a, a, a person who will be like a peacemaker, mm -hmm. who can inspire other people to do good, to, to, to bring peace, to bring a harmony to humanity mm -hmm. and this uh, this wish we already open uh, the connection we we'll create a connection with a soul that wants to do that have this mission there are tons of souls want, wanting to come but there are not enough parents for them you know well mm. prepped Operate. Yeah, I was amazed to hear Om Ram saying, you can ask for a great soul. And I used to think I was in my 20s, but if what if I'm not great yet? I'm not that great. Well, heaven allows us mm. to, to, to offer a cradle in our nest for a soul that can be more evolved than our, ours and dedicated to the well-being of humanity, dedicated to the to help the work of the great universal white brotherhood. Um, we're here to bring heaven mm -hmm. on earth. Jesus asked us in that prayer he gave us, the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come on earth here. So we can be 
workers for that. And we can ask for some bigger souls. I find this extraordinary mm. that even if I find myself quite mediocre at times and that I can strive to, to be better and to be worthy of a greater soul that I will help start the path here on earth. And speaking on that, if we talk about the opposite, why do you think we do have a lot of the issues we have on earth? Because I know Master Eidenhoff has spoken about that. Well, he used to tell us that we don't have any golden age right now, and this was in the 80s, in the 70s, because people are thinking of something else. Mm -hmm. They're not dedicating their lives towards that. And he even said that it seems so magical if suddenly everybody would go down in the street, like tomorrow morning, all over the planet, saying to heaven, we want a golden age. It will be a problem for heaven, but they would be obliged. Mm -hmm. They would have to give us the conditions for a golden age because now the law of quantity is important. Mm -hmm. So he said, let's bring on earth children the correct way so that they can thrive. And in the meantime, and then in three generations, oh, if we yeah. conceive, gestate and give birth and take care of a kid uh, with consciousness and mm -hmm. love and all these ideal ideas, we can uh, bring peace on earth. We can close the hospitals. We can close the prisons. We can mm -hmm. close the hospices. The uh, psychiatric hospitals, he used to say, yes, because Let's think here together. Psychiatric hospitals and prisons, they are uh, grades we receive as a civilization. They indicate our failure. How come we left others so desperate that they end up in prison or in a psychiatric hospitals? Something has gone wrong. Can we go back to the source? Can we go back to conception? Mm -hmm. Can we go back to the reason why we have children? I love that. And I think I've read some um, excerpts on this topic from Master Ivanhoff, and it's just so fascinating because he really simplifies it. He's like, you want to remedy all the issues of the world? Start yes. at conception. Start also with um, expectant mothers. Start there. You create a beautiful environment from that point. Whatever comes after, it will be beautiful. It will be better than what was. Yes, and I love that you fun. focus on this work. I love that. Yeah. He used to make fun of um, politicians. They come with great plans for education, mm -hmm. for, um, for, I don't know, the arts and culture. He says, those plans can be just be extraordinary, but they might not work if we still bring on earth people who will be envious, mm -hmm. irritable, um, depressive, yeah, and about depression, we can talk also that the masculine uh, gamut, the the sperm, mm. will bring the energy of the his the masculine ancestrality. So in this in this sperm, the the, the forces the, the man carries is linked to the two elements that is fire and air. So mm -hmm. the fire is, is, is related to the nervous system and the air is related to the respiratory system. So the, the gamut of the father will bring all this energy to the baby. And the, the, the women's ovule, mm -hmm. uh, the egg, egg, she will bring the elements of water and earth. So it will form it's not it's mm -hmm. not forming but it's the energy mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the water and earth water that is, is related to the circulatory system and earth is related to the bone system mm. so you can imagine how these four elements the two and two that will put will be put in together and then the the baby will have this strength for mm -hmm. both sides and for this this I think it is connected to, to the 
Heavenly Father and to the mm-hmm. Divine Mother because that's what we represent to each mm-hmm. other and then we represent these energies to our kids, to our children. Yes, and we look at our civilization, look at how much depression, even mm-hmm. suicide that has become a, such a great problem nowadays. So when we stop breathing, our nervous system collapsed. So this uh, ancestral lineage that men and women bring already at the time of conception with these energies that will um, be part of the making of the baby. It will infuse um, the baby's skeleton, bloodstream, respiratory system, and nervous system. Mm -hmm. These are major things. And this was explained sentence by sentence in the Vedas. There are other systems, but these are the, uh, the main ones. So when we speak about cleansing, about a healthy life before conceiving, perhaps giving up a little on too much caffeine or, well, everybody will know what, how to go about it. Mm-hmm. It really brings some strength in ourselves when we do that. And that strength in the man and in the woman will be conveyed to the child in the most magnificent way. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, you too. Welcome back. I'm glad that you are still here. So Carla and Laura, we left off talking about the real true importance of being conscientious while conceiving, while thinking about becoming parents and the true impact that it has in the long run, not just for the child to come into the world, but also for the society as a whole. And that even within three generations, it's possible that if we put our efforts in creating a beautiful environment for or during conception and while the woman is pregnant, the world could change. It could be such a beautiful and bright place than what it is now. So now we're going to move on and talk about the time during gestation pregnancy. So Carla and Laura, let's talk about this very, very, very important part of forming and bringing forth a beautiful, beautiful soul into the world. So can you talk about what does a pregnant mother communicate to her child while in the womb? Oh man, pregnancy, Mm -hmm. all about communication. There's so much going on. Everything the mother feels, who she is, is translated into biochemical messages in her bloodstream and they will contribute to orientate the formation of the baby. Even the genetics of that baby will be aware and will even ask, how should I develop here? And then the blood brings all this information about, yes, it's a safe place here. Go ahead, blossom or careful, this is dangerous here. And so, don't think about uh, communication. You know, it will influence the receptors in the membrane of each cell towards um, hormones and neurotransmitters of peace or restriction and fear. A lot is done during pregnancy. The child communicates to the mother who she or he is. Mm -hmm. and The mother communicates constantly. So this is the real mission of pregnancy. Let's bring this sense of imagination that I have, my or my senses are heightened. Nature has given me that gift so that I can gestate a person in harmony. As Om Ram would say, ask the soul of the baby, because during pregnancy, the soul of the mother is a little bit off, off her body, because she's making place for this other soul to be mm-hmm. working with her on the formation of the body. The whole power of a woman is into forming the child. She's not creating it. We do not put the eyelashes together with the, I mean, with the forehead and all that in the eye. No. We give of ourselves. We give the matter and we help the formation. And we can ask the soul of this baby, come on, bring the best materials Mm. for this being. Mm. I want to help you. I want to bring up this child so that he or she can be a real servant of God. So that's enticing. And we know that we live in a world that is filled with stress. 
that is part of the reality. So how would you say that pregnant, you know, mothers, how, how, or women, sorry, how would you say they could go about navigating the world today while still creating such a beautiful, wholesome environment for their growing baby? Well, our, our reactions is always linked to the way we see things. Mm -hmm. There is, of course, a lot of challenges and a lot of uh, difficult things to face, but um, we can react to that with uh, good stress or a bad stress. Bad stress can be, uh, of course, we, we all will have uh, difficult moments, but if we stay too long, like in a job that I don't don't want to be, or something that is daily, uh, it becomes a routine. Then it can be toxic. Think mm -hmm. it can be that it can be a, tax, a toxic stress. But there are good stress, uh, like when you're preparing yourself to do a, a, to a, a TV program <laughs> like yours, <laughs> or going on stage. <laughs> Or singing in front of an audience, yeah. or this can um, expand our yeah. our minds and our feelings in order to 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 do our, our best. So mm -hmm. the, the good stress, this this kind of stress we want, but we we, we don't want this toxic stress that will become like a, a, a pattern because the amniotic fluid will have mm -hmm. a different flavor. Yeah. when we have too much stress the it becomes baby, bitter and the baby doesn't swallow too much so all the formation of the uh, the, the the digestive tube the, all the digestive system will be um, damaged not damaged but it, it will not develop the best way it mm -hmm. could and also there is an information when we are under the hormones of stress the blood goes to the limbs and so the vital organs from brain to womb are not as well nurtured by that blood, the bloodstream. And then the baby gets the same message. So not only the amniotic fluid becomes more like, like bitter and the child does not swallow enough, like the very main axis of the baby from brain mm -hmm. to um, the sexual organs won't be as well irrigated. I know Bruce Lipton, one of those cell biologists, he would say, well, perhaps this, this kid will be a great basketball player, like a great sports person. But what happens at the age of 50? The vital organs, will they go under failure? So those are important questions. Harmony should preside to the formation of the baby and the organ that will re require the most amount of harmony is the brain, so that you can think long-term, you can have empathy, your, um, your cells, uh, the neuron um, cells that are mirror neurons, they will be able to mirror the other. So we will want kinship with all life. Yeah, there are some authors that already wrote about that and we have some books here to show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah scared sick is one of them it's a very very good book with a good part on pregnancy but it goes with all the adverse childhood experiences this book is a good basis for those who want to know more about the why is stress the villain and uh, and harmony the hero and of course we will be between the two of them but we can navigate and we can tell the baby, baby, this was a hell of a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, take a shower. And then let's, let's, I mean, rely on the, on the water to just wash all these negative uh, feelings. I should never have lost my job today. But you know what? We're in this together. And now that we are two, mm -hmm. we're going to overcome it. Because nature was marked creating this system. Because if you live in a very dangerous area, mm -hmm. it's good to have a big reptilian brain and right. not to have prefrontal cortex to, that will allow you to sing and to make poetry, to play a violin and to do arts because you, you need to survive. So this uh, 
uh, will not help you the pre prefrontal cortex. So it, it is to the, uh, well done, of course. <laughs> Nature is perfect. Yeah. But at the same time, if we leave this tox toxic stress in a normal urban daily life, then you're gonna lose this 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 brain this the possibility of this yeah. uh, more developed brain more sensible brain to 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 do better things in spite of the genetic material peter nathaniels mm -hmm. who taught at cornell university that would speak about epigenetics something above genetics that mm -hmm. is orchestrating how the baby develops according to his or her genes he said anybody can can um, like damage a shakespeare like you're waiting for, you're expecting this extraordinary kid with fantastic aptitudes for writing and philosophy and writing in verses. But there's so much stress, so much cortisol that the true brain development does not come into being. And that kid might have difficulties learning how to read or write. So we're made, perhaps you have heard that in Nika, we're made to function with joy as our main carburant, as our main um, gas. Joy, serene joy, conveys to the bloodstream the correct uh, formula so that every organ can do well. Mm -hmm. I love something you said um, because it's not really about being perfect. And I have a feeling many people watching the show or who are interested in conceiving or who are already expecting might be like, oh, I have to be perfect all the time so that my child could be this and this. And it's like, no, that's not the reality. And no matter what situation you're in, whether you do live in a very um, dangerous neighborhood or not, or you're going through a lot of stress at work, whatever it is, what is a healthy way to navigate it? And well, by teaching, by talking like you were saying to that to the child in the womb, you are you are teaching. They're learning from you while they're in the womb. So, like you said, if you're in the shower, you're just like, let's just let this wash away and soothe. It's going to be a better day tomorrow. It's okay. Yeah. And Can you imagine the um, the importance is to know that this kid has chosen you. Mm. And you. So no matter how intricate or difficult this your life situation becomes or is, there is an agreement, a covenant between that soul and your soul that you guys are going to be together. So trust the beings of yeah. light and embrace your difficulties because you will have them. Both of us were pregnant knowing those things. Both of us know exactly. We cannot fall prey to anxiety. Anxiety is when we, when we want to control the future. Let's not. Let's live fully the present moment. And for that, there's so much in the teachings of Amram Mikhail Ivanov that we can apply and we can breathe and become more together with who we are, with our essence, with the baby, and with life. Mm -hmm. mm, I love that. So now we talked about nature versus nurture. We talked about how in our day to day, how we can be with that growing child, which is so important to preparing them to come into the world strong and healthy and beautiful. Now, what is the role of the father during pregnancy or what can it look like? It's beautiful that some native Canadian people, they talk, the father should be they they act really as if they were pregnant of the mother mm -hmm. and the baby. so he will take care he will protect and be there for them and also he is, is sensitive to to this being uh, mm -hmm. who is coming so uh, he knows that he, he big part of this him in heritage belongs to him so he will uh, 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 connect with this inheritance that is being showed in this baby and also try to uh, improve the environment mm -hmm. because the environment 
uh, epigenetics talks about the environment, the importance of the environment. The environment of the baby is the mother thoughts and feelings, beliefs, and the father, the relationship with the father also is part of the way the way they deal together, the way they live, the way they uh, the way she thrives to through the the, the difficulties. And the father mm -hmm. can be a, a major fact on creating this environment with her and not you know giving more trouble <laughs> because sometimes there are fathers who wants to to be like a, a child for the mom also and he he has to grow up with her because mm -hmm. in the mother's body there's something happening and then in the father's there's not so it sometimes it takes longer for him to realize uh, there's a there's a child coming and if he he connects with the, this mission of being pregnant of the mother then he will um, uh, succeed in this mm. task of being uh, becoming a, a father mm -hmm. there's a journey for for everybody mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. family and if mm -hmm. you allow me a question at the beginning way before conception occurs it's good that the couple um both of the parents know how they their own their time in the womb went how they were conceived how what kind of atmosphere surrounded their birth and the time they spent in the womb because it's all registered in them and if they acknowledge that intellectually like asking people in the family being curious about it even if the parents have died there's always information coming they will know how to later on identify sometimes in the middle of the pregnancy a weird feeling of not mm -hmm. ah, something strange well at that exact time in pregnancy the mother of this mm -hmm. the father now the grandmother of the baby in in the way she had lost her brother she was very sad and suddenly the child in the womb felt oh my goodness there's a tragedy i need to help mom mm. and um he didn't feel seen um enough i mean there's a huge and vast universe about that let's always know who we were in the womb how we were conceived how we were born so that we now create our new ways mm -hmm. of uh, welcoming this baby and not just merely reproduce that can engender a lot of engender a lot of violence domestic violence during pregnancy because of the lack of satisfaction of this man or this woman because they're remembering their anger when they were in the womb or tiny mm -hmm. babies newly born mm -hmm. it all matters it all matters and um, I do have a question. How, how could now the mother and father to be acknowledge each other during this time? Mm. Admiration. Mm. What would you say? Because if you have the question, you've been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit. How do you let your imagination free? Tell us. What would be so, a way to nurture that couple? Hmm, because I often, I asked it because we've been talking about the mother and then the father. And then I realized that in my working in the medical field and just friends and family, they often didn't always see each other. It was always like kind of a role and a duty. And if they had taken the time during the nine months to really form a bond and connection, and see, like you're saying, admiration for each other. They're both part of this creation, co-creation, this miracle, this, this beautiful treasure. Um, how it's beautiful yeah, thing. How because if they bring the spiritual dimension, wow, now we're talking. And, and you know, we can only be who we are. We don't need to become somebody else because we're going towards a pregnancy or because we're pregnant we we have to be who we are but at our best mm. and this best does not mean that we don't fall from a horse that doesn't mean that we don't lose it yes but then we start again 
we come back. Mm -hmm. It's all work in progress. And it's also, uh, it can, we can improve this relationship when we look to the other, like if we're really looking at the div divinity, mm. because everyone has the divinity inside. So mm -hmm. if you look to your partner uh, as the heavenly father or as the divine mother, in case of the woman, so you can upgrade um, the way he behaves, the way she behaves, and it will allow, uh, it will remember mm -hmm. them, one of them, of who we, who he, they really are, their real nature, and in this way we can be better, we can, we can improve. Mm -hmm. I love that. That is that is so beautiful. Um, now, are you ready to talk about nutrition? Well, you know, nature is a great friend. Mm -hmm. Like, um, of course, we are nature, but nature outside. But we don't. We cannot always go for walks in gorgeous prairies and forests and and mountains. But every day we eat. Mm -hmm. Every meal is a communion. We partake with nature. Each one of the um, the elements we eat is made out of four elements. If you have a peach or a mango, we're here in the tropics in Brazil, or if you have some vegetables, they each were able to gather some particles of the universe and put them together according to an exquisite design. And then there was the food. So as we eat, there are ways of nurture, several, several instances in our physical and subtle bodies. Yeah, for example, to nurture the aesthetic body, it's just about breathing while you're chewing the food. Take a deep breath and really allowing this food to go to these higher uh, and subtle uh, bodies. That's the energy, the first energy that will nurture yeah. us. We, we do that spontaneously. But we, Mm, it's delicious as we savor the flavor we breathe and by breathing the etheric body starts to be restored and we take the our physical body takes its energy from the etheric body so this is mighty important and the proof that it really works that like that is because when you start eating the food didn't arrive yet on your stomach and you, you already has no more uh, you're not hungry anymore so it is what which mm. part of you became uh, satisfied with that food mm. so, and do by doing this uh, the, the nurturing her aesthetic body she will also teach because we're teaching during pregnancy we're teaching the, the baby in the womb all the time so they will know how to nurture the aesthetic body and there are there are they are then are the other bodies. Yeah, but this vitality at the very beginning, as the mouth like a real stomach, before we swallow, that's something you should try, all of you, because we're all pregnant of ourselves for tomorrow morning and a month from now. And then you have the body of emotions. How can I, by eating with, uh, Omram had this gorgeous yoga of nutrition that he called Hrani yoga. Hrani is nutrition in Bulgarian. How can we nourish our feelings or emotions well by thanking gratitude is the very beginning I'm, I'm in wonder at the at the deliciousness of the food and i'm so thankful as i am chewing it on that fruit the fruit is stopping ceasing being itself to allow me to be me because there is a simple detail if i don't eat i die so there is a there's a moment where I am assimilating that fruit and it's giving me a flavor and so delicious. There goes my, my astral body, my body of emotions. It's been nurtured. And also the mental body. You can nourish with, by thinking of the size and the, f the format and the color of the food. H how was it on the field? Who sewed? Who took care of this? Uh, these vegetables who uh, 
uh, harvested and, and who transported and if, even who prepared because all this imagination process becoming together with the nutrition it's the both uh, important things to pr and pregnancy it's the nutrition and the imagination the master even talked about uh, spiritual governoplasty that is a, um, a metaphor a symbol it's not perfect but it's it, it gives quite an idea about the work the mother during pregnancy can do in this epigenetic uh, point of view, how this, uh, th this work will allow to form the, the baby's body. You can explain that. Yes. Um, mm. By, you know, when you want to have a medal being gold plated, for instance, you don't put the, the medal into a melted gold it's an electrical, um, chemical, physical uh, reaction. And uh, of course, you need to have a little bit of gold, then the little metal, then a solution of gold salts. And the battery will link all that between the metal, the, the metal, sorry, and the piece of gold. And every single piece of the gold uh, metal will go but perfectly uh, on the surface of that metal. This is how I have a golden plated metal. Mm -hmm. So the gold would be, for instance, what's in the mother's mind. It could be also lead or silver, but he usually preferred to give the example of gold that never gets tarnished. Like a, golden being that's how should we should be during pregnancy every time we feel that we're away from the gold let's go back to being gold and shining so that the baby can assimilate the formation of his or her body mm -hmm. with those extraordinary qualities which means that enthusiasm will be there during life problems will happen but the baby will be equipped a future adult so no matter what genetic heritage the child has received the mother can always improve it by nutrition and good thoughts and good feelings and her trust her daily practice the surrender to life forces and her connection to her higher self these mm -hmm. we go as a, a another layer over the the genetic in heritage so it will improve. This is a great work to do. We have the golden roots. Uh... Oh, yes. Imagine that in Greece, um, a judge, a disciple of um, Master Omram, mm -hmm. Ioana Mari, she devised 10 golden rules. She's a birth activist, besides being a judge of the Supreme Court for administration in Greece. And these rules are just beautiful. They are about breathing, about eating. And in Greece, the couples, when they receive their marriage certificate, they also they are offered mm -hmm. the golden rules. It has been going on since 2008. Beware of the Greeks. Once more, they might bring lots of harmony mm -hmm. to it. So all, all the societies should help the mother because it's a major task. It's a pivotal, pivotal role. And all the societies should, should engage in this task of respecting pregnant woman because she is the real educator of the baby and the womb, not by giving lessons of ABC, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. It's just by creating and keeping this environment. And also we, as a society, we could imagine to create places where women, pregnant women could be in peace and in connection to, to nature, to arts, to beauty, to harmony. And this will help this impregnation of all these qualities to her baby and to the future adult. Yes, that was one of the main ideas of Omram, to indicate to governments beautiful places in, in their land where women could spend the time of their pregnancy, but amongst themselves, like taking a rest from normal daily life so that they could dedicate their energies to gestate surrounded by arts by beauty by nature and he said it might look like a strange uh, plan 
but it's worth spending millions. You will see what happens later, thanks to that. Yeah, that this the role of the mother, the pregnant mother, was one of the main teachings of Omran. That's why we, we dedicate so much our mm -hmm. lives to that theme. And there are some kids that already um, give a testimony of that when they when they talk, uh, even as small kids, they talk about the origins, the fetal origins, and the, 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 the origins before coming to Earth. This is a very interesting book, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a study, a 20-year study by a couple, mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth Carmen and Neil Carmen, and they corroborate so much of what the Master tells us. It's amazing. I love it because these are kids from all over the world, from the age of one and a half to four or five, and they tell their parents spontaneously, and they don't even come from family who <laughs> have faith or specific faith. Right. They say what they lived. So it's in us, we're pulsating memories. We know what has happened to us. Some adults remember also, but it's much more rare. Mm -hmm. And we can offer so much to children. And they will be able to, to be the stewards of a new civilization respecting and be, and loving our planet. And how do we tie all this to the baby's genetic expression? So I know you've mentioned quite a few times epigenetics, and I love how it's all coming together, isn't it? So science, yeah. or what we call modern day science, is in its own way expressing what they have been talking about in um, the Vedic tradition many, many years ago. Yes, throughout the 20th century, science was wedded to genetic determinism. Sperm and egg meet, everything is determined. And this was for the majority of the, um, of the 20th century. But then towards the ending, in the late 80s and the 90s, more and more discoveries came in the field of cell biology. And they realized that the very program, genetic program, was not determined, it could be influenced, influenced largely by the atmosphere the mother would bring. This whole orchestration of which um, genes are going to be silenced, others will be expressed, others will even be kind of created. And if it wasn't by it, the genetic, can we imagine how the earth would be? Because we have been living a holocaust against children for many many centuries and we have this book of uh sorry i don't know how to show <laughs> you're fine <laughs> you know it's a psycho history oh, wow. was born by um, a social thinker lloyd de Mos. it's a new branch of history that only studies children what happens in the nursery what happens in the playground what happens in the early infancy and what happens during pregnancy. Mm. If you know that in a nation, you can predict as the best predictor of them all. You can predict how the society will be 40 years later, the modes of parenting. And we look through history, it's not beautiful. It's a shame. <laughs> yeah. But also with what you're saying, it's in our hands as well. Yes. We have the capacity to really change the outcome of the world we have today we do yes that's about this power to take in hands this power yeah we have been educating our children in the womb throughout millennia but we have been educating them for stress being mm. and wanted for low self-esteem low self-esteem brings aggression so we've been doing the work, but very poorly. We never knew um, we were not guided or oriented in many, many cultures to live that time as a, a time of utmost importance for the quality of human civilization later on. So we're not just expecting babies, we're expecting future adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's something important to keep in mind when we conceive and when pregnant mothers are living, it's not just in nine months, oh, a child, no, this is the future, literally. 
Well, we to finish, we have a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura wrote a very beautiful poem mm. that, to, to read for you. It's about the possibilities and yeah. the planet. And it's dedicated to Master Omram. It came from 2002, the day we met. Yes. Yes, it's amazing. So it goes, the title is, I know a planet. I know a planet where nations live in peace and nature is respected, where science and philosophy are never used to enslave, to limit, hurt, or spread terror. There, each person is conceived and gestated consciously, and that world reigns a true spirit of kinship with all life, and pregnant women are treated in a very special way. The arts and crafts of each community are made available to them. They admire trees, statues and fountains as they walk through beautiful parks filled with flowers. By day, the bird songs embrace them. By night, the stars entice them to visit distant worlds. In these parks, there are houses where the mothers can take part in many activities they sing, they weave, they paint, they embroider, they draw. There are also theaters, libraries, and cinemas, and they can study, teach, meditate, laugh, and cry. In the schools of this planet, adolescents study the importance of conception, pregnancy, birth, and breastfeeding for a happy humanity. Couples approach knowingly the moment of fecundation, understanding the physiological, psychological, and spiritual dimensions of a pregnancy, prepared to welcome the mystery of life with serenity. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, for sharing with all of us. And thank you for being part of paving the path to a beautiful, beautiful world. Thank you for supporting so many people throughout the world, no, especially our pregnant mothers. Thank you. Om TV, bringing this message to many, many around the world. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, ladies. Well, thank you so much for bringing your knowledge and your wisdom around this topic. So very important. And I wanted to share a few words from my master Ivanhoff. He said, and this is why I launched this appeal to women throughout the world. Stir yourselves, wake up to the task that God has entrusted to you. You have untold secrets in your keeping which could be useful to regenerate the human race, but you are unaware of these things. The time has come for you to be conscious of your mission. So thank you. Thank you again, Laura and Carla, for sharing this knowledge, this wisdom and joy with us all and for spreading it throughout the world. If you've enjoyed this third, third episode, please join us in two weeks for the fourth episode on how to harness the power of the sun and lights for your inner spiritual transformation. The fifth episode will be a special one on how the power of collectivity benefits individuals and societies. And finally, in the sixth episode, Anatole will interview a range of people from Africa, Asia, Europe, North and South America, and Oceania, and how they experience the teaching in everyday life. The testimonials will particularly emphasize the benefits of visiting spiritual centers. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Naika, and see you in two weeks. Peace.